I wanted to spend just a few minutes thinking about buckles um, today on armour. Uh, they're something that can make a piece and break a piece in my opinion. Um, if you've got the budget for them you should always go for decent buckles. And by decent I mean they can either be exquisite looking get that out of the way, there we go, exquisite looking ones like this. Uh, this is a nice cast buckle uh, from Bailey Heritage Castings, uh, Matt Bailey. I'd, uh, I'll put a link below, but I'd suggest looking him up if you're after some really nice um, buckles and other bits and pieces as well uh, that he makes. So that's a decent buckle. You get, uh, I haven't got any um, in the workshop, they get ones made from uh, wire uh, that the armour has made. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're really quite quick and dirty looking beasts. Um, but some of the nicest armors uh, in the museums you see today have buckles that aren't as, as nice as this one, uh, even though the armor deserves it. Um, so I think you have to sort of pick your fights on uh, what buckles you're going to use. Um, I wouldn't even really know how to go about saying, you know, certain things are and aren't on buckles. I mean, this is a, a, obviously a modern, a modern buckle that I've replaced on somebody's armor at some point. They've asked me to, um, and the bit that often people get bent out of shape over is this roller on the front yet if you look at the um, I don't know just something as straightforward as the uh, armor reports that have come out of um, Visby um, you can see examples of uh, buckles with rollers just because it's got a roller on doesn't mean it's a modern buckle often gets called a sort of modern dog buckle um, you know the, these these as many different uh, buckles as you can think of today they were probably built back in the day the amount of buckles just on that Visby find alone um, is amazing. It's amazing. But I just wanted to sort of show a way of, of, of making uh, some modern buckles um, look more medieval. I'll do a little sort of air quotes around uh, that. Um, make them look more medieval because, uh, you know, there are lots of plain examples of buckles which you go, oh goodness, they're immediately modern, um, but they're out there. Something that happens uh, a fair a lot to some buckles, so this is one I've just been replacing now. Something that happens an awful lot to medieval buckles is the corners. Now obviously this buckle here has been made, I guess, by putting it around a former. It's likely a, can't see in there, a little cut in there. And it's just bent round. Now you do find the odd example like this, but what they tended to do, one way of, of making it look more medieval if that's what you're trying to do uh, on a budget, as you hammer these corners a bit squarer, um, it takes a few moments to do. You just push those out, or you put some um, chisel work in the corners. So what I'm doing at the moment on this one, I'm replacing some buckles. Is we're, we're trying to re uh, refurb a, a harness. I'm trying to refurb some armour as cheaply as possible. Now, you know, you buy cast buckles, and they can cost anything from three fifty up to seven eight pound per buckle. And if you're talking say over a harness is maybe, I don't know, anything from 10 to 20 buckles, that's a considerable expense um, when somebody's just trying to jivvy up their armour a little bit and give it a bit of a spring clean. And you can get buckles like this uh, for I think it's about 50-60p um, from Abbey International or something they're called. I'll put a link in the um, comments. And you can get them and you can tidy them up and make them look a little more medieval. Um, there are certain things going on and I'm certainly no buckle specialist and some bits I'm just going to gloss over but this is just a quick easy fix to tidy your buckles up and to um, make them look a bit nicer. So one of the first things um, I like to do with these buckles is they're very square in their shape. So what we've got, if I manage to waste this, this will be a result is we have that sort of shape going on with our buckle. But what I want to do is create a bit more, I don't know what the shape's called, trapezoid, lozenge. I'd like to go a bit more like that. You tend to find that shape a lot on um, medieval buckles, I think, just because of the way they're made. So you can take them round a square former, and then if you cut that out and push the two edges together, you end up with that shape um, very quickly. So obviously I'm not going to open this up 
here because we're trying to do this as quickly as we can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file, or in this case my uh, belt sander, to the edges. And the top at the moment is like that. And what I want to do is square that off as well. Not that they didn't have ones that looked like that, but I just want to square that off as well. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on the uh, belt sander and we'll get that done. There we go, we've, we've taken those edges down a little bit and tidied them up a little touch with a, a hand file. But obviously you're not going to create that wedge that we saw on uh, this version of the chalk. Um, it's impossible really because there's just not enough material there. But you can start to create the illusion of it. If you wanted to put more of that illusion onto this, what I would suggest is gently hitting the corners with a hammer and flattening them a bit uh, and that will create that spray, let me just zoom out a little bit, there we go, that'll help create that spread there that you're after, uh, if that's what you want to do, if you really want to go that far with it. What we're going to do is we're going to just put some simple chisel marks into this now, and then um, polish it up, and we're done. As mentioned, in this case we're trying to bring just a little bit of bling to the harness, uh, sort of 10 foot bling, by that I mean at 10 foot away it will look and lift the piece, um, if you get too close to it, uh, you'll start to see uh, some of the fudges, I guess. Um, but what we're looking to do now is just put some chisels in the corner, a little sun spray in the corners. Um, so what I tend to do is I've got the little hole at the end of the anvil here. Get your buckle set up so I now, now know that I'm looking at the face uh, facing edge. And flip that over and just drop it in there. Just gives a little handy uh, tool for holding. And what we're going to do is take a chisel And just give it a quick little spray in the corner. I'm sure it's got a technical term. I just don't know it. Like I say, speed is king here. If you're taking a lot of time over this, you might as well have bought a decent buckle. Or a posh buckle. I don't quite know what to call it. But a nice buckle to lift the piece. We're trying to keep the costs down for the customer here. So this should take about two or three minutes per buckle. Okay, so we've got this edge now. You can see it in the light there. Look, all scuffed up. We've got a very sharp edge there. So I just want to tidy those back a bit. And then we're done. Five minutes then, probably in total. I said two earlier, but about five minutes in total to turn a very modern buckle uh, into a slightly more looking medieval buckle. Let's get them in a bit closer so we can see what's going on. Let me zoom out. Here we go. I'll tip them out of my hand. I hope that's coming up clearly on the uh, screen later. On my little screen here, it doesn't look. Uh, very clear. There are problems with it, of course there are problems with it. I'm not saying it's a medieval buckle. What I'm saying is, is it's a quick and easy cheap fix to gaining some uh, a step up 
in the right direction if you feel your buckles aren't particularly medieval. But like I say, have a look at buckles, have a look at medieval buckles and you will be very surprised just how modern a lot of them look. They just need a couple of little fixes uh, to remove some of that sort of industrial mass production look from them like this, a little bit of um, individuality, that sort of business. Unless you go for the full style uh, of a, a nicely cast one uh, like these beasts. You just got to choose what's appropriate for the harness that you're doing. So I hope that helps. Um, it should be able to help you lift the piece that you've got in front of you if you feel something like the buckles are letting it down. You don't necessarily have to even um, buy new ones. You could uh, lift them off of the existing harness and perhaps alter them that way. I'm going to do a, f a few of these little fudges I think over time on some buckles just to sort of show how you can lift um, the look of a buckle from perhaps something that you're not very satisfied with to something that you're more satisfied with as a stopgap or an interim uh, whilst you figure out how to either make uh, your own buckles or um, buy decent cast ones or whatever it is that's appropriate for your harness. So I hope that was helpful um, one way or another and I'm going to crack on because I've got loads of these to do.